Hello, if you clicked on this video, it's because you're too high. And I've been there. And there were multiple times in my life, especially during my adolescence, that I wished there were a video like this out there for me. And so I wanted to make it. I wanted to be a source of comfort to you if you are in a space that's not so comfortable right now. So I have some virtual tea to share with you. Hopefully you can make some or get something calming on your end because unfortunately you're gonna have to ride the wave. That's the first thing I wanna get out in the open. There is no way to get rid of a high when you're just too high or not having a good time. Sit with that fact and be aware and that's okay because luckily this is temporary and as much as it might suck right now, Hopefully we can turn around the rest of your time or at least get you through this specific incident so that you don't have to do it again if you don't want to. So I do wanna say right off the bat, you are safe. You are completely and totally safe. You have no risk, nobody has ever died from weed and I promise you're not the first. So don't call 911, don't call the hospital. If you do have a trusted friend or a parent or a family member that you can confide in, then absolutely do so. And if not, then I'm going to do the best that I can to just sit with you for a little while and hopefully we can get through it together. If you have access to CBD or anything of the sort, then I suggest taking a little bit because, you know, even if it is placebo or not, because CBD is very effective. I find that just taking it and sitting and doing some deep breaths really does help me get down that first level of nerves and hold them in, focus on exhaling. Sometimes when I'm too high, I get worried about little things. It could be that I'm worried about a specific ailment or that I think that I'm going to die or I have a panic attack about something unrelated but I promise it's not going to happen. But our bodies have an amazing way of tricking us when we're high. Things feel so much more intense, and even as a massive stoner, I go into thought loops and spirals when I'm high. I will overanalyze myself, I'll private my own videos, and then I wake up the next day and I'm like, damn, all that for nothing. Now we gotta go put it back up because those devilish thoughts took over. <laughs> so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get on your level. Let's be uncomfortably high together. <laughs> my coping mechanism. Can't let my bestie suffer over here solo. And if it makes you feel better, I've smoked thousands of times in my life, a concerning amount. And I've seen no detrimental effects yet. So, you got time. So hopefully as you start to lighten up and feel better, you can find a comfort movie, you can play some music. I suggest zoning out, I suggest putting those crazy thoughts or problem solving, put that on the back burner. We have time, we can think about it later. We're gonna scoop that up right from you and we're gonna put it over there. We're kicking it to the curb. Goodbye, goodbye, get the fuck out of here, we don't need you. We'll come back for you later when we're in the right state of mind, but get out right now. Get your ass up and metaphorically kick your anxiety to the curb. I'm waiting. <laughs> I wanna see you do it. <laughs> if some of your anxiety is coming from a place of paranoia, I wanna let you guys know that one time I got so high that I actually called the cops because I thought I heard a voice downstairs. I told this entire story and then I ended up taking down the video but needless to say, it was not an intruder. It was an Alexa. So that really goes to show how wild our brains can be and how they can convince us to be in these states that we would never be in, all because of a little herb. You ain't no bitch. You're not gonna let the herb win. But even if you are letting the herb win a little bit today, that's what tomorrow is for. <laughs> mm. I love tea. When it comes down to it, I am very lucky because I don't spiral that often when I'm high. I tend to have a good, peaceful, calm time. If I start to get anxious or I'm just not in the right setting, I take my ass home if I can, or 
I don't know. I power through it. Most people are not going to be interrogating you. The only times people have ever really caught on to me being high via my behavior is when I try too hard to overcorrect. It's very easy to fly under the radar if you just speak when you're spoken to. Don't go on tangents, just kinda lay low. And when you do so, 99% of people in public are not gonna be like pointing you out, staring you down, conspiring that you're high because the best of us have gotten high. The best of us get regularly high. <laughs> As I was saying, the mind is such a crazy, powerful tool. It kind of reminds me of that quote. I'm not a massive Harry Potter fan, although this is like the second video in a row where I have referenced it. I think it's Dumbledore who says to Harry, of course it's on your head, but why should that mean that it isn't real? And I feel like this applies in the sense that you might be giving into anxieties and stressing yourself but it's still real. It is still your lived experience. Sometimes I think just knowing that you're not crazy, that it happens to the best of us, and that we all are really just animals living in our own heads is so helpful. When you kind of can realize that there's no real immediate threat, we're not cavemen being hunted by a lion. We just still have that fight or flight living in our bodies because for some reason evolution hasn't gotten rid of it, which is probably a good thing because there's still a lot of threats in the world and we need it, but we don't need to give into it and listen to it when we're high. It's okay to let those thoughts pass on by. You can look at them, but you can recognize they're not true. You can be like, that's my experience and it's real and I'm seeing it and I'm living it, but I'm not feeding into it. I am above it. I'm just watching the show. I'm watching the slideshow. That's how I view thoughts, because they aren't you. I'm not the first person to say this and I'm not the last, but realizing that your thoughts are not a reflection of you, but ultimately your desires and your choices are freeing. No matter what, you will be okay. And you know what? Even if you did take yourself to the doctor or the hospital, you'd probably sober up in a couple hours and be like, damn, that was a little bit silly. If you were in a dilemma and you felt like it was headed that way, I hope that this video maybe deterred that or made you feel just a little bit better, like a smidge. And I hope I can be like an internet sister to you or a mentor or your stoner mother. You know, I'll be any of them, whatever title you like best. <laughs> My comments are always open. I read them every day. I would love to help people through whatever I can. I would love to give tips to you. It really makes my day. It really just makes me feel better about what I do as a creator and feel like there's some purpose to it. <laughs> now I'm questioning myself because I'm just sitting in a room making a POV. Is this where we're at with my channel? Apparently so. So now we can just be two high, dumb broads together. I hope at the very least this video brought you back down to earth, made you feel a little bit more sane and in touch with your sober self because I promise you are A-OK. -okay. But I love you, have a beautiful night, Get yourself some munchies, some treats, and allow the good feelings to wash over you, because I promise, food can fix everything when you're high. See you next time.